This is a really difficult and challenging report for the BBC actually because what it really goes to show is a sort of, there's a kind of culture of confusion, uh, a lack of leadership, everyone was sort of too rigidly stuck in their management silos, nobody worked as a team and so as a result of that, that's why sort of Jimmy Savile uh, 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 scandal got completely out of hand while the BBC was unable to sort of get a fix on what had gone on at Newsnight a year before, uh, 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 couldn't find out why the programme had been canned, couldn't give a good account of events uh, uh, as to what happened. And, and because so many people were sort of competing, fighting, warring against each other, not leading, the BBC was sort of late in, in, in explaining what was going on and really forfeited an awful lot of public trust. There was a lot of criticism of, of, of individuals uh, and you've obviously seen Stephen Mitchell, the Deputy Director of News, uh, he's, he's resigned or is it retired? He's uh, retired, the bosses say he's resigned. Anyway, either way, he's gone. Why? Because for a reason that he can't explain and nobody ex can explain, he took the Savile programme, the Newsnight film, off the sort of in-house risk list. That would allow other people to have seen it. He took it off that risk list and sort of marked it in, term, in effect as a programme that wasn't very risky. Well, this of course has led to his own departure and the departure or the resignation already of the Director General in part. So <laughs> clearly that was one of the worst judgments that one could have made. Newsnight clearly sort of was clearly out of control. It's absolutely right that Peter Rippon has moved aside. Uh, I, I think Liz Gibbons is deputy also. Uh, why? Because they made mistakes. You know, Rippon maybe, you know, maybe he felt it was legitimate uh, you know, what the report says, he made a legitimate decision about his decision to drop the film at that point. He also wasn't put under any pressure by the boss class, the people above him, uh, head of news, Helen Bowden or anybody else. You know, he wasn't asked to drop the film because uh, it was inconvenience of Jimmy Sauer tribute. But nevertheless, he didn't proceed with the investigation. He didn't do all he could to get it to air. He didn't sound alarm, alarm bells in the BBC about potential abuse involving a BBC star on BBC premises. And so I think with all that in mind, you know, he had to leave news night because relations at Newsnight have broken down. The Pollard report is a very good comprehensive report. It has some tough, uh, almost Churchillian language, if you will, at times. Uh, uh, so I think it's a, it's a good document and it's the beginning of the healing process. I think it's, a, you know, it's an honest, the most honest attempt to sort of get to the bottom of what happened around that sort of, that original Savile Newsnight broadcast, I think, can bring some closure to that sort of, this, this, this row that's really sort of been you know, running around inside the corporation for nearly a year. And BBC's got to move on. Um, uh, uh, the failure to broadcast was one kind of error. Worse still was the actual, the actual decision to broadcast incorrect allegations about Lord McAlpine. But uh, unfortunately in journalism, mistakes do happen now and again. Uh, and what really matters is, is you've got to learn your lessons as best you can, pick yourself up and move on. And I think the, the, you know, the, the first point is that at least now we've finally got to the bottom of what happened, something the BBC should have done in October, but has managed to do so before Christmas. And that, I think, at least allows a new DG, Tony Hall, to begin the rebuilding process uh, yeah, and put, you know, with new leadership around him.